Right, so this is about your last project that you'll be doing for Drawn and Painting 2. It's a two-fold project. You're going to look for inspiration from your famous artist. That's the artist that you either chose yourself or the hand of fate chose for you. And then you're going to use that inspiration to create three pieces in your journal. The pieces in your journal should be considered projects and not journal pieces. They will be graded as a project. You're only doing them in your journal because it's a lot easier to carry it around while you're doing your EOCTs and the schedule so crazy. So um, in your packet, these are the three pages that you got. This is the first page, the back and the front. You'll notice on here there's the pre-planning information and then there's the journal entry information. This is planning for a journal entry. You're only going to do one of the inspiration pages, and then you're going to do three of the planning pages. Then for each planning page, you're going to create a double page spread. That's a page that's where there's two pages facing. And if you think about it, if you were doing that in class, that would be a larger piece of paper than 16 by 11, which is what you'd be doing in your journal with two facing pages. Um, in the past, I've had people who asked me if they could do it on separate paper. That's fine, too. I'm just allowing the journal since it's easier for you to transport. Um, if you notice on the back of that piece of paper there are rubrics there and you are welcome to look over that. That gives you an idea how I'll be grading that for you. Um, the second page in your packet is an example of what I want your planning page, your brainstorm page to look like. A planning page and an actual journal page. So you have a copy of that, you keep it with you. It's also here on this PowerPoint. Third thing you'll have in your little packet is a calendar. Um, it's marked with your EOCT times in classes you'll get to see me and when your projects are due. Notice your expressive self-portrait is due on the 9th. Your series of three is due on the 16th. And then your final exam will be on the 20th and 21st of May. Okay, These are tentative. They might change. We'll see how it goes. Um, so let's talk about what it means to be inspired. Inspiration is stimulating your human mind for creative thought or the making of art. So we want to find ways to stimulate your mind to make art. These are um, student works on the left and it's going to be um, professional artists on the right. And these students were inspired by something by each artist. I want you to notice that inspiration is not imitation. You won't be copying your artist. You're merely finding something about this artist that inspires you. If you notice here in the Eric Feischel painting, there's this strange light that's be in front or behind the main emphasis of the painting. And then the emphasis of the painting is in a uh, shadow, which is very unusual. You don't normally see that. This student artist did the same thing here. She also used a bit of the same color palette. Color palette's an easy way to be inspired by an artist. So technique is one way you can be inspired. Another way is by feeling. Um, this artist here did a New York street scene, I don't know if you ever, in, and showed a window, like a shopping window. And there's all this chaos going on in the window here. Well, you notice there's a repeat of some of the, um, there's a repeat of some of the colors here. The color scheme is the same, but also there's this chaos from the window that gets transferred into this uh, piece here. Um, inspiration can be uh, color. This is just simply a color scheme. You notice how it's kind of a quiet look on the girl's face as well. I think she carried that kind of mood over. Color scheme is a very easy way to be inspired. This is going to be a mood. Um, David Jansen does this very um, kind of calm, melancholy mood. Um, very brooding, like there's something about to happen. And you kind of get the sense that there might be something about to happen over here in this piece, even though they're not really related, but there is this sense of mood that's the same, and they're different um, themes, but mood is the same. So there's a lot of ways that you can be inspired by your artist. Um, this is almost probably the most direct, other than color. It's um, how they did the poses the same, how they kind of end at the end in white. And you notice that both the student did that and the, fam and the producing artist. Um, so here's how you begin to be inspired by your artist. You're going to create a brainstorm. Um, I, for this one, I've chosen Andy Warhol. And I said, what I appeals to me, you start with what appeals to you. Um, and for me, it's how he repeats images. So I made a 10 brainstorm list. Um, I started with Warhol repeats images of celebrities. Um, I kept going. Celebrities are created as royalty in the U.S. Celebrities are the sum of their image. Images of self are everywhere today. I like taking selfies myself. 
I used to take selfies when I used film cameras back in the day. Um, for me, celebrities from Warhol equal selfies today. So selfies are how we portray ourselves um, as we control the photo. So this would be my brainstorm list. You're going to take a concept from your artist and do the same thing. Then once you have your brainstorm list, by the time you get to the end, notice how this statement down here is going to come into my inspiration statement. My inspiration statement um, is Andy Warhol has inspired me to create three journal pages using pen and acrylic about how I like to take selfies. The idea comes from how Warhol liked to repeat images of celebrities. And now I'm going to use that concept to make the rest of my journal pages. You'll find this on the first page. Here's the statement that you need to do. Um, there's my statement here. Um, and it also says you need your 10 brainstorm list. Um, on that page it also tells you that you do not have to um, to activate this page. I put uh, Andy Warhol's image down here, an image by Andy Warhol, just because I didn't like having negative space. But you can do it just plain pen or pencil. When you upload it, you do need to make sure that I can read it. So once you have your, your um, concept, then you want to make a series about it. So these are one things after another. Um, in the art world, a series usually has a common theme, a common technique, and a common color palette. Those are three things that generally would give you a good series. Here's Picasso's blue period. Um, obviously blue because everyone, every single painting in this period did have blue, but they're all very melancholy. They have the same mood. Um, they're always about people. He portrayed them very sad, and they get the sense that they all belong together as a group. George O'Keefe, um, her flowers work as a series because of the way she um, portrayed the flowers. She wanted you to look at them completely different. They're not the same color um, palette, but they are the same pose, and you can tell how they belong together just by the way that she's um, manipulated the paint. This is an AP student, a high school student. Um, this student used color pencil, and very well, I might add. With each uh, piece, he's added each one has a common theme. They are dealing with his drawings of fantastical creatures, um, his love of um, art materials. You'll see them in almost every single one, and also some kind of container that holds a liquid. So this is kind of the way he kept this common theme going. This AP student, another high school student from Taiwan, she liked to show people in Taiwan. You'll notice that it's crowds and crowds of people. Um, they take up about a half of the um, drawing or the painting. This is a watercolor paintings. The other half becomes the environment that the people are in. And then for the most part, there's very few features on faces. And this becomes, you can see how they all belong together as a group. So you're going to take your concept and you're going to make three pieces that work as a series. That means they need to be related. Related in color related in theme, uh, related in media. If you do those three things, you'll take care of everything you need to do. For each one of the double page spreads, that's two pa pages in your journal that face each other, you have to do one planning page. On a planning page, you have to do three thumbnails. So you have three pieces you have to make, three thumbnails for each, and that's nine thumbnails total. Even though my paper says 12, I had a little trouble with the math. Um, so this is my example of one planning page. Notice it's journal entry number one. These are the thumbnails. So I did uh, three of them. This one is selfies with targets, and I said that's just plain silly. But it's taking that concept from Andy Warhol that um, I want to deal with why, how we take selfies to repeat images of ourselves and how it's important to us. So I did number two. I made a conveyor belt going back into space. And back here, this is um, how, to make a how to shoot a selfie kind of directions and then uh, directions on how to make a selfie and then this would be a picture of me this would be the main emphasis here with a target on my face and I said that's still too obvious remember good art is something that draws the viewer in and makes you think so I said instead of a camera change to paper airplanes because we throw them at things kind of like you take pictures of things and then leave the selfie portraits and don't have the targets on the faces the last thing you need to do is that you need to have um, a, a sentence about how you're going to use this, how you're going to create the composition. 
So it says use bright colors, and I'm going to use bright acrylic colors. And then the conveyor belt is going to move the eye to the chart in the background and then down to the emphasis portrait. Um, you need to make sure you have a statement like this on each one. And then when you get for pages two and three, you need to explain how they will relate to each other. So what does this look like? This is the planning page here, and here's the journal. This is the double page spread journal. This is down the spine, down the middle, and how they come together. And you can see how this plan becomes that there. Um, if you have questions, email me. Get working.